What's up guys, this is Jason from Sim Park Observer and welcome back to Planet Coaster. Today we're going to do a quick tutorial showing you how to use the terrain sculpting tools. Um, we're also going to show you how to use the water and also the painting texture tools. Um, this is actually based on a original request from one of my subscribers. So if you're out there and you know who you are, this is for you and anybody else who actually appreciates uh, these little tutorials. So it shouldn't take too long, not a whole lot to cover. Uh, basically what I'm going to tell you guys is I'm going to give you the information on how to use the tools and how you actually apply them in your own parks is going to be completely up to you and the limitations of your own imagination. So once you're done with this tutorial, I wish you the best of luck in creating some fantastic sculptures. All right, so let's get into it. Down on the bottom right hand corner, there's the terrain button. We're going to click that. And the first button here in the upper left hand corner is sculpting. And under these sculpting tools, you have pull, push, flatten to foundation, flatten to surface, chisel, smooth, and roughen. We're going to go over each one of these individually in just a moment, but first, each one of them also has settings to the right. Almost every single one of these, I think every single one actually, you can increase or decrease the intensity by its own percentage here. You see on the right hand side it moves up and down based on how you move the slider. And then you also can change the size of your cursor. Right now that's at um, 12 meters, but I can actually decrease it all the way down to 1 meter and as high as 30 meters. That's a pretty big cursor there for sculpting. For this demonstration purpose, we're actually gonna reduce it down to uh, maybe about like, I'd say about 10 meters. That sounds good. And for intensity, let's just keep it at around 50%. It says 51, we'll just work with that. All right, so the first button here is the pull tool. Uh, once that's selected, it does exactly what it says. I'm gonna go ahead and pause my park here to get rid of some of this ambient noise. And um, you just put it anywhere in your park where you want to start sculpting. Left click your mouse and hold down and it starts pulling up the terrain around it. Well, it's a little too fast, so we're going to reduce the intensity a little bit. Yep, that's a little bit better. Yeah, so basically if you haven't figured it out, the intensity is how fast the um, terrain gets pulled, pushed, flattened, whichever sculpting tool that you actually have selected. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of create sort of like a little mountain range here. Nothing really huge or crazy or out of control. Um, but I am going to increase the intensity again because um, I do want to make it somewhat nice looking. Just give you guys an idea of the kind of uh, sculpting tools uh, that you have available and also the power behind them and what you can actually end up creating. And I think that's pretty good. We'll make like a little peak right here in the middle. Uh, I feel like that guy Bob Ross again. We're going to put a happy little mountain right over here. And uh, maybe he's got a little bit of a buddy right over here as well. Yeah, that's probably good right there. Okay, so now we've got a nice, nice little mountain range here, uh, our little rock face and uh, some small hills uh, by using the pull tool. Now, in reference to the pull tool, we also have the push tool, which does the exact opposite, of course. And instead of pulling the terrain up, it actually pushes it down. And this is very helpful for creating lakes, rivers, ponds, uh, streams, anything, any body of water that you want to create later on, or even if you just want to push down that mountain that you think is just a little bit too high, or maybe just doesn't have the right shape that you want. Fairly self-explanatory. Now I'm going to tell you one quick tool that you can actually use instead of switching back and forth to pull and push by holding down or um, yeah actually just holding down the control key while you have one or the other selected it will actually do the opposite action of what you currently have selected so let's say I have pull selected it's gonna raise it up if I click the left mouse button but if I hold down the control key with pull selected it will start pushing it down likely if I have the push selection it's gonna push down under regular circumstances but if I hold down the control key it will actually pull everything back up. This is just sort of like a quick key tool uh, for those of you who don't want to just come back down here and switch back and forth. Might be helpful for some, uh, unuseful for others, but I'll let you guys make that decision and do with it as you will. Okay, so that takes care of the push and pull. Now over here we have talked about intensity and size. We haven't talked about the scenery and surface lock buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a little piece of scenery really quick to show you guys what that's all about. And we're just going to place a couple of uh, rocks sort of like in this area. Nothing really fancy, just something, you know, just to kind of get an idea of uh, what these tools do. Okay, so I'm gonna close that out. We're gonna go back into our terrain. 
and we're going to select scenery lock. Um, but before we do that, I want to show you if you actually have the pull tool selected, this will be for pull or push. If you actually use the pull tool around scenery objects without that box checked, it's going to pull the terrain up around whatever scenery you have created. And if you do that too much, then uh oh, your, your scenery is all gone. You probably are not going to want to do that. I'm going to push this down just so I can reveal those rocks that I placed down there and show you guys a way that you can actually uh, go around that. If you click the scenery lock button and you have the pull tool selected, say you want to create um, a bit more of a ridge around these rocks, but you don't want to pull the terrain up around them itself or below them at least. Um, as long as you have that scenery lock button checked and you start pulling up the terrain around it, even if you have it selected below this terrain, these uh, objects, it's going to pull the, um, the terrain up, up or around it and it's going to ignore those objects. It's going to pull everything up and around it. You see how it's sort of just forming uh, with, around it without actually uh, hiding it per se. Now you can obviously push back down again with this terrain, uh, the, excuse me, the scenery lock button selected. And again, it'll push down all the scenery or the uh, the terrain around that scenery without lowering <laughs> the uh, terrain that the scenery is placed on. So I hope that gives you guys an idea of how to use that. Say you wanted to have these just sort of like isolated in that little area, maybe like on a little island or something like that. You could use the push tool all around it and it'll hold that terrain where those scenery objects are. Okay. All right, so moving along, uh, we're going to uncheck the scenery lock, and now we're going to click on the surface lock. And if you guys have seen before, when you use push or pull, the cursor is dynamic. In other words, instead of it being in one place when you uh, click and hold and move it around, it actually sort of rotates in the direction that the um, scenery surface, or the, excuse me, the terrain surface is um, is pointing I guess so like here it's pointing in this direction because it's on this flat surface and if I move it up here it rotates based on the um, the angle of the surface that it's on well if I actually click surface lock which I have already done uh, it will actually stay in one position once I start moving it around so let's come over here to sort of an empty area and let's say I want to pull the terrain up in only one direction facing let's say that way once I start clicking it's only going to pull up in that particular angle if I do it without that check, you're going to see that that cursor will actually change and it's all woo, it's all wonky. It goes in a bunch of different directions and actually um, pulls in any direction that you actually, that it's facing as you're pulling. But if you want to lock that position, then you just go to the surface lock and it'll start pulling only in that particular angle that you have selected. And we'll just pull this up here and we'll push it down in the same direction so you guys can get an idea of how that looks. All right. So I hope that makes sense, and we're going to go ahead and move on to the next one, which is basically the flatten the surface. Flatten the surface is very simple. Um, if you want to flatten any of your terrain to a specific surface, um, a horizontal surface that is relative to your artificial horizon, um, this is the tool that you would want to use. So you just click in any particular um, area of your landscape that you want to flatten to. Like say we want to flatten it to this particular height. If we start clicking here it's going to flatten everything to that height if we click down here it's going to flatten the uh, terrain down to this spot and using this you can actually kind of get like little caves or sort of like uh, overhangs like this uh, that one kind of looks a little bit weird but you guys get the idea of what it's used for um, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of continue flattening this so I can get rid of those little weird areas and if you can see how it, it sort of leaves that sort of floating rock right there that you don't want to keep if you actually change your camera angle and start clicking and dragging towards it you're gonna see it's gonna start removing all that stuff above as well so if you get some weird sort of um, uh, terrain deformations that way you can get rid of it in that uh, in that way uh, or you can just go up here use the push tool and it's gone as well okay so that explains that one uh, now to the flatten to surface um, this basically is similar to the flatten to foundation, but will flatten to any surface relative to the angle of the cursor. So instead of it actually having flattened to foundation where it always stays in that horizontal position, this one actually changes relative to the surface level and will flatten to that angle. So if I come over here and I change it to this angle, it'll flatten to that angle. If I come over here, and I change it to this angle, it'll flatten to that angle. Now this is actually really helpful if you guys actually wanted to create some terrain uh, that 
gradually goes uphill and that you, maybe you say you want to um, build a path up to. Uh, something like that. Because paths don't always lock onto the terrain if it's at too steep of an angle or it's too jaggedy or something to that effect. And you might need to use that particular flatten to surface tool in order to be able to get these gradual inclines so you can add your paths on it later without having any um, intersect issues. Okay, so now we also have chisel tool. Uh, selecting this one it basically just does what it says. It chisels away at the terrain that you have selected. Uh, I'm going to decrease the intensity here. We don't want it to be too crazy and we're also going to reduce the size a little bit too just to kind of give you guys an idea of how it works. Now it literally just chisels away and also locks the surface as well so that your cursor doesn't move around. It stays in that one position so you're only chiseling away at that angle. So no matter where I move it, it's always going to chisel at that angle. Um, this is pretty helpful for doing like specific sculptures like if you wanted to make your terrain look like a gigantic elephant or a uh, giraffe or whatever your object you're creating is uh, this might be helpful um, to do complete uh, like hold downs like this or you could also even just sort of like do little increments like this just to get some fine chipped chiseled details in the area that you want Okay, uh, the next one we have is smooth. If you ever get any spots in your terrain that look uh, not quite like Mother Nature intended and they end up becoming uh, more of this sort of, um, uh, not pixelated, but rather uh, polygonal uh, looks where it's got hard edges instead of smooth like nature, uh, use your smooth tool. Grab that over here and just start going around those rough edges and it'll smooth them out for you. Um, if it does it too fast and you want to decrease the intensity, just go ahead and do so, and it'll do it a little bit smoother for you. And we'll just kind of show you a few other areas that can be smoothed out like this. And like that. And let's just say like that. Okay. One more sculpting tool down here, and that's the roughen one. And you can see it sort of has a little icon here that shows you that it actually pulls and pushes at the same time. And that is literally what it does. So we're going to come over here to this area that I kind of smoothed out. We're going to increase the in, uh, size of it. We're not going to increase the intensity. We don't need that. Uh, and then we're just going to start pushing the mouse button, that is. <laughs> and you can see it actually sort of creates these sort of um, unnatural looking formations. or Well, I guess it would be more natural. The whole point is to get it uh, looking rough so that it's something that looks like it wasn't really quite man-made. And it's a lot easier than using the push and pull tools to make a bunch of these little, um, you know, crevices and, and hills and peaks and things like that. Uh, make something look a little bit more natural like that. And then let's say you've, uh, you know, you're, you don't want it to look that rough and you want to smooth a few things out. Well, you just come back to your smoothing tool, reduce the size a little bit, and just start smoothing out the rough edges that you want. Very, very simple. So that is really it for the sculpting tools, guys. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move now into the painting tools. Uh, this one, don't need to spend a whole lot of time on because it's very obvious. Uh, if you want to paint your terrain a certain texture, just select the one that you want. You've got a couple of rocky uh, textures here. You've got some sandy ones. You've got some grassy ones and uh, also some dirt. Uh, we'll explain this auto paint one in just a moment, but I'll just give you an example. We're going to go ahead and select this sand. And we'll just, uh, well, let's increase the intensity a little bit more than that. And let's just say we want to make a sandy bottom for this uh, little area because we're going to add some water to this later. Very easy just to go ahead and select the type of texture that you want and add it in. Uh, it's really easy to, um, you know, get sort of like a just a general coverage in here. And then come back with just say maybe like some rocky area and just sort of like spackle it in. Just to kind of give it a little bit more, a uh, bit of realism. To show that it's not just you know exactly all sand it's just kind of a mixture of both play around with it see what you like um, everybody's different they have different tastes uh, based on what they think their terrain should look like i'm just kind of showing you guys what's available you use it however you want to so this auto paint feature basically just takes any surface that you actually just painted and makes it the way that it was uh, when it was either pushed or pulled originally or carved away before so if i click that auto paint and i go back in here it's just going to paint the terrain back the way it was automatically when we use our um, sculpting tools. If you want to undo the stuff you have did, just hit Control Z and it'll change it back. Or you can also hit the undo button over here. Or you can just go back and start painting again. It's really up to you. So that takes care of painting, that takes care of the sculpting tools. Now let's go ahead and add some water to this little area that we have created over here. But you know what, I think I want to go ahead and push this down a little bit more. Just to make sure that we have like a nice 
deep area to place our water with. Okay, that's pretty good probably. So once you have your, let's just call this a lake ready to go, uh, click on the water tools. You have four different types of water. These are um, different types of textures. You've got dirty water, standing water, rough water, and calm water. I like the calm water and the rough water. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with the calm. When you have your water tool selected, you're going to see a little blue line that appears in the area where you can add water. And anything that appears in red, like this, is where you cannot. And that just basically means that the level of this mark right here goes above the lowest level of your, or excuse me, the highest level of your ridge right here. But anything that's blue, you can go ahead and place. So we're going to go ahead and drop in the water right about there. And you're going to see it's filling in the water for all the area level to that specific line. Well, let's just say that I didn't like where I put it. You can either hit Control Z to undo it, or Control Y to redo it. Or if you don't like what it is, make sure you have your water tool selected. It doesn't matter which texture. And then right click to get rid of it. Now let's say that I want to replace it with rough water. Select the rough water tool. Go back to your line and left click. Oh, now well, that's too high. I didn't want that high. So let's go back down to here. Ah, that looks perfect. Now I've got my little island over here with my rocks. Everything looks pretty even. And you know what? Hmm, this doesn't look quite the way that I wanted to. I think I want to kind of bring that down a little bit. Well, the great thing is that I can go back into my sculpting tools, click smooth, and just start smoothing that out and make it a little bit more level. And if that doesn't work and the smoothing tool runs out of options to level that out, you can always go back into your push and just start pushing the text, the, the terrain down until you like it. I mean, the, the, this, the, the tools that they've given you in this game, guys, are fantastic in order of um, sculpting. So, I mean, use your imagination. Go hog wild. There really is no limits to what this game can do at this point. Uh, so use these tools that I've given you. I have hope this tutorial has helped. That basically ends it for this particular tutorial, and I hope you've liked it. If you did, please give a little thumbs up. Click in the bottom of this uh, video, and if you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out a lot, guys, and until next time, happy building, and keep it loopy.